dear students welcome to the session on grinding and mixing both grinding and mixing come under the broad category of mechanical operations mechanical operations are physical operations without mass transfer with mechanical energy as the driving force let us take up grinding first grinding comes under the unit operation of size reduction under the broad category of mechanical operations this is a popular chemical engineering unit operation which finds application even in food processing unit operation is an operation which cannot be reduced further into subunit operations in a given process for example making coffee extract that is decoction involves several unit operations such as harvesting the beans fermenting drying grinding and finally extraction to obtain the decoction let us study the following aspects of grinding basic definition objectives types of actions factors affecting the efficiency equivalent diameter energy loss equipment and finally applications in food processing before concluding grinding is defined as a size reduction operation of any given raw material prior to subjecting it to food processing what are the objectives the major objectives of grinding are to increase the reactivity to remove unwanted substances to increase mass transfer to facilitate storage transport and also further processing for instance in mango processing the skin and stone are non edible as such hence they will be removed by size reduction operation called pulping size reduction increases the surface area and reduces the diffusional distance thereby increasing the mass transfer let us look at the relevance of these unit operation in food processing with help of some examples consider the dehulling and polishing of paddy dehulling of paddy is carried out in hullers or roller mills to get rice however brown rice that is just dehulled rice is not suitable directly because it has huge issues such as improper cooking as well as sensory quality and poor storage stability accordingly it has to be polished partially or completely to remove the bran to obtain under polished rice or white rice grinding is popular for producing spice powders say turmeric pepper chilli etc after the primary cleaning it may be noted that many volatiles are lost from these spices during grinding operation due to the frictional heat developed during grinding to retain these volatiles fetching higher price obviously grinding is carried out at lower temperatures achieved by the presence of liquid nitrogen popularly known as cryo grinding liquid nitrogen makes spices brittle especially the ones like ginger turmeric and even coconut facilitating the size reduction operation what are the types of action involved in grinding let us look at the basic types of forces in size reduction equipment as compression impact attrition and cutting compression involves gradual application of forces that is pressure example is arachnid cutter impact involves sudden application of force 
It requires sieves to separate the ground material into fractions of different particle sizes. Example is hammer mill. Attrition involves application of shear force rather than pressure resulting in very fine powder. Example disc mill. Cutting involves application of force over a small surface area in particular direction to get the defined size and shape. Example is slice cutter. Let us look at the factors affecting the grinding efficiency. First one is density of the material. Higher the density, higher is the production rate, but higher also will be the energy consumption. Materials with low bulk density leads to lower production with low power consumption. The next parameter is moisture content. The fracture stress of a material varies with the moisture content in the raw material. Example, household grinding of rice or ragi is carried out by soaking, draining the excess water and shade drying prior to grinding. It enables to get rice flour as a residual moisture absorbs the frictional heat leaving the flour dry and free flowing. Temperature is another important parameter. Lower temperature facilitates the grinding of heat sensitive materials. Examples wax, chocolate, coconut butter, fat powders. Let us look at the spear city which is equivalent diameter. Shape and size of the particles obtained on size reduction will not be uniform. Some will be close to cylindrical shape and some will be to a sphere. It is desirable to know the degree of closeness of a particle to that of a standard sphere which is expressed as equivalent diameter or known as sphere city. It is defined as the ratio of surface to volume of a standard sphere to that of given particle. From geometry, we know that equation for surface area sp is pi dp square. For volume, pi by 6 dp cube. When you substitute as a ratio, it will be sp by vp of the sphere to that of sp by vp of the particle. Then substituting the equations for sp and vp in this equation, you get 6 multiplied by v particle divided by dp into s particle. Finally, dp is obtained by equating the actual volume of the particle to that of a standard sphere. Coming to the theoretical aspects, we look at energy laws that govern the grinding. Grinding is one of the most energy intensive unit operation. Out of the energy supplied, only 2% is utilized for the size reduction. In other words, for the creation of the new surface and rest is dissipated as frictional heat energy. The design of equipment is empirical in nature based on the empirical equations which are discussed below. The first one is Rittinger law. It is proposed on the basis that energy consumption is inversely proportional to the area created. In the differential form, it looks like dE by dL is minus C L to the power of minus P that is minus C L to the power of minus 2. The equation can be integrated. Let us look at the sign of dL which is negative and P is minus 2 because it involves size reduction and area is considered proportional to square. On integration, it becomes E is equal to C into 1 by L2 minus 1 by L1, where C is 
KR FC, the constants. KR is Rittinger constant, FC is the constant accounting the crushing strength of the material. It may be noted that these constants are dimensional. Rittinger's law holds good for grinding operation rather than crushing operation that is size reduction from medium to small size particles. According to this equation, the crushing efficiency is constant for a given machine and material. It is independent of the size of the feed and the final product. These are the drawbacks of this law. Kick's law instead of surface area alone, this equation proposes surface area per unit mass. Surface area per unit mass is L square by M. M is nothing but volume into density. So, L square by L cube that is L to the power of minus 1. In other words, P is equal to minus 1. In differential form, dE by dL is minus C L into minus 1. On integration, it gives E is equal to C ln L2 by L1, where C is a constant. Kick's law holds good for coerce crushing operation that is from large to medium size. Further, energy requirement is independent of the feed and product sizes as long as the reduction rate is maintained constant. These are the drawbacks of law. Bond's law proposes a intermediate situation where the average of minus 2 and minus 1 is taken as minus 3 by 2 as the exponent. So, d e by d l is minus l into minus 3 by 2 on integration it gives the required equation of e is equal to constant into square root of 1 by l 2 minus 1 by L1. Now, let us look at the equipment for size reduction. In comparison with other unit operations, grinding and crushing remained still an art and slowly marching towards science. Excellent equipment are being designed despite the lack of a single unified theory mostly based on experimental data and also by extrapolation. Equipment is available in industries that are being adopted for food processing industry. Let us attempt for citing maximum food applications of, to make the topic relevant and interesting. Among the types of forces discussed above, some of them will be prominent in each of the equipment described below. However, some component of remaining forces cannot be ruled out or avoided completely. Under crushers, we study jaw crusher. In jaw crusher, as the name suggests, can be seen from the figure, one jaw is fixed while the other is mobile or swinging with an angle of 27 degrees exactly like a human jaw there is a V shape opening for the feed. The major force involved is compression. The frequency of swinging jaw is as high as 400 times per minute. The average opening for the feed is about 1 to 2.5 meter taking about the feed size of 1.5 meter. The crushing capacity is very high about 1200 tons per hour. Next one is a gyratory crusher. By virtue of the shape of the holding chamber and crushing head as can be seen from the figure, the V shape crushing zone exists in one location or the other throughout the grinding period. The gyration frequency is about 400 per minute. As a result, it gives very high capacity of about 4500 tons per hour. Being a crusher, the major force again 
involved is compressor. It consumes much lesser power and has a lower maintenance compared to jaw crusher. Other types of crushers include smooth roll crusher, single roll crusher as can be seen from the figures. Under category of grinders, let us look at hammer mill. It has a high speed rotor in a cylindrical casing and can grind any material almost. As can be seen in the figure, the rotor has rigid or swinging hammer mills on it. The major force is impact. Due to high impact, cell disruption is more giving a wet ground material in case of ginger or coconut. It is provided with a sieve to control the particle size of the product used for grinding of wheat as different varieties of floors are required for making different products. Also used for grinding of de-oiled cake which is rich in fiber and protein. Coming to attrition mills, let us see disc mill. The size reduction occurs by a single rotating disc against a stationary disc. The major force involved is shear or attrition. The burstone or rock emery is replaced by stainless steel to cater to the food safety regulation standards. The rotating disc can be cooled by brain or refrigerant. Air is drawn into the system to avoid choking. Disc mills are suitable for soft materials such as spices like pepper, cumin, ajwine etc. Capacity is in the range 0.8 to 8 tons per hour. Required size is obtained by adjusting the gap between the discs and also by multiple passes through the equipment. Ball mill also another attrition mill. It is also called tumbling mill. This unit can be operated both as batch or continuous mode. As can be seen from the figure, solid metal spears of different sizes occupy almost half the volume of the equipment. The major force is attrition between the material and the spears and also the impact of the metal balls as they fall while the equipment rotate. Other types of attrition mills include ultra fine grinders such as fluid energy mill, agitated mill, colloidal mill as can be seen from the figures. In all these equipment, the major force involved is attrition. For example, colloidal mill is suitable for stabilization of coconut milk prior to spray drying and also for breakage of algal cells for the release of secondary metabolites such as proteins. The last category are cutting machines. Fruits, vegetables are not suitable for compression, impact or attrition. It is often required to produce pieces of fixed dimensions and shapes for them to be suitable for specific applications. Knife cutter is one example. It has a rotor with knives rotating while having a small clearance with a stationary set of knives. Material is cut several times per minute into product of uniform size, say cubes of 5 to 8 mm or discs of 1 to mm thickness and 4 to 8 mm and centimeter diameter. Examples include cubes of raw papaya for tutti frutti ice cream, pineapple slices for canning in sugar syrup or juice itself, rectangular long cubes of potato 
for the famous French fries. Applications in food processing, in addition to the examples cited till now, wheat milling is a very big industry for the production of floors of different particle sizes suitable for different products. Processing of coconut such as deshelling, pairing to remove the testa, production of coconut grating, deshelling of cashew nuts, dehusking of sunflower seeds prior to expelling of oil, de-skinning of pineapple are a few examples. Now let us go to the second subtopic of mixing. Mixing is an unit operation which finds its place in several process including food processing. One should distinguish mixing from agitation. Agitation is providing motion in a homogeneous phase, say gas or liquid or even a solid. On the other hand, mixing involves more than one phase which is to be thoroughly distributed into each other or one another with good degree of uniformity throughout the system. For instance, water can be agitated and alcohol will be mixed with water along with some solids. The following aspects to be studied with regard to grinding. Basic definition, objectives and design of equipment. Mixing is an unit operation for blending more than one component and more than one phase thoroughly to achieve a uniform distribution. The objectives could be simply heat transfer, either heating or cooling. It could be for blending one liquid in the other, for mixing two solids such as acetoda with filler material such as floor. Also for suspended solids in liquid or dispersion of gas in a liquid like in the case of fermentation. Design of equipment is very important. It is crucial for achieving the desirable degree of mixing and the end result in a given process operation. The mixing equipment finds application in different process operations such as crystallization, solid dissolution, preparation of squashes or jams etc. The mixing equipment has a tank, impeller, baffles and motor. There will be provision for addition of acid or base or flavor and also for draining the contents. The tank volume that is size will be decided by the capacity of a given process operation. Once working volume is predetermined, the tank diameter that is T and the height H of the tank will be fixed. As a rule of thumb, it will be fixed as H by T is equal to 1. Impeller that generates the liquid current or fluid flow is the most important component. These impellers can be broadly divided as radial flow and axial flow impellers. Paddles and disc turbines are radial impellers. The flow generated by these impellers will be mainly in the radial direction that is from the tip to the tank wall. Pitch blade turbine and propellers are axial impellers. The flow generated by these will be axial that is from the impeller tip to the tank bottom. Some components of radial flow proportional to the blade width cannot be avoided even in axial flow impeller. The flow generated by these impellers either in radial or axial direction eventually returns back to the impeller region. Paddle consumes the highest power since blade surface area exposed to the liquid is highest in this design of impeller. That is why the power number 
NP is very high as high as 8. The energy efficiency was improved by incorporating a disc to which small blades are welded and the power number reduces to 5 in case of disc turbine. Power consumption was further improved without compromising in the performance in case of fitched blade turbine where NP is 1.2. It may be noted that radial impellers produce more turbulence in the impeller region and as a result most of the energy is dissipated in this region without contributing to the actual performance. As per rule of thumb, the diameter of the impeller D is kept as one third of the tank diameter that is T by 3. Clearance of the impeller from the tank bottom is another important parameter that has impact on both power consumption as well as performance. Closer to the tank bottom better will be the performance in terms of fluid flow. But power consumption increases with a decrease in clearance from the tank bottom. Rule of thumb indicates the impeller clearance C as one third tank diameter that is C is equal to T by 3. Baffles are incorporated in the tank to reduce the swirling action or vertexing. Higher the number of baffles, higher will be the impact but higher will be the power consumption. Similarly, higher the width of the baffles, higher will be the effect and higher will be the power consumption. Rule of thumb says the width of the baffle W is T by 10 and number of baffles are 4. As a standard design, it can be summarized as D is equal to T by 3, C is equal to T by 3, W is equal to T by 10 and N is equal to 4. All these impellers work best for Newtonian fluids. For non-Newtonian fluids where viscosity will be higher, these impellers cannot be used and we have to employ impellers like helical ribbon, gate impeller, anchor. The dimensional number called Reynolds number RE defines the nature of the flow whether it is laminar or turbulent flow. Reynolds number gives the ratio of inertial forces to the viscous forces. RE is inertial force by viscous force in the equation form. In a flow through a tube, it is given as RE is dV rho by mu, where d is the tube diameter, V is the velocity of the fluid, rho is the density and mu is the viscosity of the fluid. In case of impeller, the impeller speed V which is equal to ND because it is proportional to the tip speed. Accordingly, the equation takes to the form of R is equal to ND into D rho by mu that is ND square rho by mu. The power consumption has strong dependency on the impeller diameter and rotational speed for a given fluid and is given by P is equal to NP rho N cube d to the power of 5 for a given flow number that is Q produced by the impeller Q is equal to WP d cube where WP is the pumping capacity or the flow number. Another important aspect is mixing of solids. Often in food processing, mixing of solids is required. For example, for preparing ready dry mix powders for different snack foods such as idli, dosa, etc. For energy food preparation formulations, mixing of solids resembles that of a liquids. Hence, the same equipment can be used for blending of solids also. Yet, the mixing operation will be significantly different from liquids in the sense that there will not be any flow pattern developed in case of solid mixing. 
more power is required when compared to liquids. Uniformity of the mixing is ensured by collecting good number of samples from different locations of the mixing equipment. The sample size has to be reasonably large in order to get consistent results. The equipment for mixing of free flowing solids include ribbon mixture or blender, axial mixture, tumbler mixture as can be seen from the figures. Ribbon mixture contains as suggested by name two helical ribbons, one big, one small one interwound with each other. It is used for the mixing of small portions of solids or liquids into large quantity of solids. Axial mixtures will also have helical screws which provide good radial mixing and axial movement of the material that is in the plug flow. The screw gyrates in the conical casing meeting all locations of the equipment. The tumbler mixture resembles a cement concrete mixture. Different configurations with twin shell or double cone are available. Even the ball mill without metal spears can be used for as a solid mixture. Entonator is centrifugal mixture used for fortification of atta with micro units. In conclusion, it can be said that grinding and mixing are important but energy intensive unit operations of food processing. As unified theory is still under development, equipment design is still empirical. As food material is diverse in shape, size and moisture content and also different from that is available in other parts of the world, indigenous efforts for design and development of these equipment and also for modification of the existing equipment for suitable adoption in food processing are very much essential. Significant scope exists for make in India concept in this area.